Welcome to the historic city of Barcelona, where the 52 Super Series is celebrating its 10th anniversary with 10 boats racing this week. New team back on the circuit for the first time for a while is the Paprec team. Quantum Racing are bidding to become the first team to win five titles over the 10-year history. But Phoenix are just five points behind and also have designs on the title. Join us every day for our lives from Barcelona. Well, a very good morning and welcome to beautiful sunny Barcelona. We're here at the Rail Club by Nautical de Barcelona, where the 52 Super Series started 10 years ago. Who can believe that? 10 years ago here on these very pontoons. So we've got 10 boats racing this week. It's the finale of the season. We've raced uh, four regattas this year, this year so far, and this is the title decider. We've got Quantum Racing, five points ahead of Phoenix, but there's also the uh, kudos of winning the final regatta of the season. It looks like it's going to be a light wind. Uh, week and that means that the point scoring can be quite high uh, and uh, really anybody could win the regatta it's going to be interesting to see who wins the 10th title of uh, 2022 Indeed, welcome to Barcelona. Beautiful sunny morning, uh, not too much wind around the dock, uh, but the anticipation, the uh, nervous energy is extremely high on board the, the different boats as they head out onto the water for this 10th uh, anniversary regatta. It's 10 years since we started off here in Barcelona. We have Quantum Racing just uh, five points uh, clear at the top of the table. Two returning uh, teams, or two, one returning team in, uh, in the French team from uh, Paprec, they're playing catch up and uh, Tina Plattner returning to uh, Phoenix who are lying in second place and so uh, Tina Plattner very much in the hot seat but uh, the best uh, situation the best regatta we've had so far this season many would say was in Scarlino in Tuscany uh, earlier on in the month we had great breeze all the way through the week and we had racing every day and quantum racing came out with an emotional victory the fourth regatta of the five event 2022 season the 52 super series returns to beautiful tuscany and to the marina de scarlino at stake is the historic royal cup after a five-year break the return to scarlino and tuscany is a popular one ashore there is great local food and wine to be enjoyed and on the water well it's a challenging dynamic and interesting race area Important crew changes and the different lineups see the underperforming platoon of Harm Muller Spreer bring in three times title winning tactician Vasco Vascotto. Honestly, I never expected to sail with him in one boat because we had so many shit fights in the, in the past on the water against each other. But after we have been a few days in the boat together, it's working fine. What we suppose we fight a lot in the past. The reality is that we have a good uh, relationship. Let's prove that uh, we are tough enough uh, in the water to deserve some good results. Andy Soriano's Allegri recruit young blood double Olympic medalist Will Ryan. I did want to bring some young, young people into the group. After some evaluation, we felt that Will was the right guy. So Nick chose Will and gave him the nod. We have to balance my age with a, with a younger guard. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really lucky, obviously, stepping into an experienced team and Nick's trained them well beforehand. I'm very quiet on the boat and Nick's really good at just kind of leading the team, so I think we, we work well together in that respect. And Quantum Racing are missing long-time mainsail trimmer Warwick Fleury. Chris Hoskins stepped in for Warwick Fleury. He's stepping into probably the best mainsail trimmer in the world's shoes. You know, as we know, Warwick is the GOAT. And so after a season that maybe seems to have encountered mainly light to moderate winds, uh, Scarlino really delivers in every sense, building up to 25 knot breezes at times, averaging probably 20 knots, and there's lots of big waves for spectacular racing. Newcomers Vayu opened with a win, but 2021's champion Sled streaked to a run of form early on, leading in the early stages Murray Jones and Francesco Bruni, the Sled afterguard, working a particular magic. 
Keko and uh, Mari are really doing the magic. They just see things that other boats don't see, and boat is fast. Mr. Kura is doing a great job downwind. So, yes, all good. In the middle of the regatta, Platoon vindicate the changes with their best day of the season yet. It's just a, a matter to, to sail properly the boat. Nothing changed. It's still sailing. Still, you need to pin the committee, pin the pin, and choose one side. It's quite easy. And although sled lead into the final Saturday showdown, Quantum Racing prevail once again to win their third regatta of the season. That's a well-earned win, and you, know, you have to give high marks to Doug and to the whole squad for it. So it's a good one knowing that I steered the boat for Charles and we got fourth, and every regatta Doug has steered, we've won. So I think there's something to that DeVos guy. <laughs> we want to win the battle in Scarlino, but we also want to win the war. Sled takes second, and Platoon sneak onto the podium. Well, that was uh, in Scarlino, I see an emotional victory for uh, Quantum Racing, missing uh, Warwick uh, Fleury, who has uh, health, uh, health issues. I'm sure he'll be watching, so our very best to uh, Warwick and uh, Rodney Ardern, also missing with uh, a family uh, problem. And uh, so the uh, two, uh, Chris Hosking uh, and uh, uh, Curtis Blue, stepped on board uh, last minute for uh, Quantum Racing and delivered a victory. And they are, say, five points clear at the top of the table. Uh, the table looking like... Uh, I say uh, 130 points for Quantum at the moment uh, after these four regattas. Five points behind uh, are Phoenix with uh, Tina Platner stepping in the, to the uh, helmsman's role, a helm position uh, this week. So uh, quite a tough uh, tough task for Tina and uh, Platoon sneaking onto the, the uh, podium on the last day. Now that uh, relationship with Vasco Viscotto then coming on board in Scarlino, really starting to work towards the end of the regatta. I think they were probably the uh, best scoring team through the second half and uh, really they're hungry, they're looking to uh, win a regatta at least and set uh, out their stall for uh, 2023. Sled uh, just missed out on the podium in the end, we're leading into the uh, final final day of the regatta. They're not um, too far off the podium, they'll be looking to, uh, to get on here, a team which has a great experience uh, of uh, closing out regattas and uh, also the, uh, the two Olympic medalists who won in 1990, or who took silver medal in 1992, uh, Rod Davis uh, and uh, and Don Cowie sailing uh, on the uh, on the sled. So that's this, that's the uh, top of the table just now as we uh, anticipate this regatta. Unfortunately, very very uh, light winds on the water. We're going to have to wait until the uh, breeze fills in. S expecting uh, maybe six or seven knots. That was our news from uh, Juan Vila, a navigator who's locally based. Uh, and back with the Olingi team. He's saying we should get some racing later on the afternoon. So do uh, keep your eyes posted uh, on our social media channels. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to go out racing immediately, but do, do join us and we should get some racing this afternoon, hopefully.
Uh, well, welcome back to the uh, Real Club Nautico de Barcelona. Joined by uh, Guillermo Parada then. Uh, back 2012, the uh, 52 Super Series started here. A lot of water passed under the bridge since then. How does it feel to be back? It's, it's very nice. Uh, I've been walking down the dock and having a lot of memories since the, the very first event of the Super Series, which I still remember very well. My 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 boy was born the day after I arrived home, so I was every day I was looking at the schedule, I was looking at the date, and I said, I hope I can be there, otherwise they, they will they will kill me by the time I I get home. But luckily he waited for me, and everything was fine, and we had a good regatta, so I have good memories, you? very good memories. You won that regatta, didn't you? We tied with Quantum at the end. And we lost, we lost on tiebreaker, but for the overall, we, we tied yeah. and we ended up winning the season. So 2012 was a good season for us. Anyway, racing today is looking very light. Uh, it's all about the uh, season title, Quantum five points ahead of Phoenix. But there's also the battle. Who can win the final regatta of the season? Uh, I think that given the, the light wind conditions that we are expecting for the breeze, it opens up the, the things a lot more because if the breeze is... Uh, heavy or, or steadier, it's a lot easier to make your predictions. I mean, the, the, the good or strong teams at the end, they normally they get to the front because of consistency, because of having better sales, better equipment, better crew, whatever, a, a better package, we can say. So by the end of the, the regatta, they, they edge ahead. But in this light and stable conditions, boat speeds are are very, very similar, and a anyone can win, and sp more especially, anyone can get a double-digit finish. So so I think that for maybe for the sailors, it's not a very nice week, but for us, looking this time from outside, I think it's very, very good. Biting the fingernails all week. Yeah, for sure. Let's have a look at the point standings, uh, then, as we go into this fifth regatta of the season, this title decider. This is uh, Quantum Racing, five points ahead and 130 points, Phoenix in second at 135, Platoon uh, in third uh, at 13 points behind uh, Phoenix. So an outside chance really, but uh, as uh, Gigi just said, double digit di or double double digit day, and, uh, anything can happen. Sled uh, defending champions uh, were in the mix at the end of uh, Scarlino. Certainly would love to finish with a regatta win. Allegra really have great potential and have been up there many times this season. Again, love to finish with a with a regatta win. So to Prevetsa, same situation. They've had a podium uh, recently in uh, Puerto Portales uh, and uh, they've been showing fr flashes of uh, excellent form uh, and really, really want to deliver for their owner. Value uh, have been uh, have had good moments and not so good moments, but they really were on form uh, and up the front many times uh, in uh, Scarlino. Uh, Interlodge uh, have uh, Cameron Appleton back as a tactician this week and Gladiator have everything to play for. But uh, Gigi, a few words about Platoon. I mean, we see Vasco at the back of the uh, Platoon. I bet you never thought you'd see that. <laughs> it was, it was. It's a little bit of a surprise. A, a funny thing to think about a couple of seasons ago, uh, especially about <laughs> after a, <laughs> a funny moment in a, in a pre-start, I think it was. But but we we all know Vasco is a very talented sailor, and whenever Platoon had the the opportunity to to look for a tactician, he was among the first ones that that anyone would choose. So I'm very glad for him, and I think it would be a very good addition for for that team, which certainly looks like one of the boats to take into consideration this week, given the conditions, given they have nothing to lose, and the boat is fast. And Vasco, I'm I'm in. I'm in contact with him almost on a <laughs> on a daily <laughs> on a daily basis, and he's he's really motivated. He's super and motivated, isn't he? And we we have another boat here, right? Because we were looking at the at the qualification, and and we we were looking at nine boats, but we have the Paprek back back in the fleet for for this regatta, so that makes ten boats. After which ten years, we which make it always more even more interesting for the, for the standings. Let's have a look at the uh, the interviews that we did uh, before the teams went on the water. We started off with uh, Juan Vila, an America's Cup winner, back in Barcelona with the Alinghi team, uh, and uh, this was his weather predictions for the day. So, Juan, very light this morning. How's it looking for racing today? Yeah, it's uh, a bit on the light side, obviously. Uh, we're hoping for um, hopefully some sea breeze to develop later on. That's probably one of our chances. Uh, maybe there could be some easterly in the morning, but it's um, yeah, it looks pretty light um, overall day. 
And how do you model the sea breeze here? Well, it's hard to do it, just uh, looking at different weather models, but at this stage they're saying different things, but most of them are on the light side anyway, so um, yeah, it's going to be what, what we see, it's what we get. What are you expecting then in terms of wind speed? Yeah, so we're expecting, uh, you know, maybe getting up to seven, eight knots at, at the best, and then, um, but then uh, otherwise generally uh, just a lot of falls, uh, probably six knots or less too. And is there any local knowledge on your own part? No, not really, just uh, really it's a tricky day, so basically keep your eyes out of the boat. What do you, how do you feel about your prospects against Quantum in particular? I mean, Quantum are for sure the favourites. Uh, they've won this series, I don't know how many times, world titles, Super Series champions. Um, we won our first event a few events ago, and um, this team we've never been in with a shot to, to win the overall. So it's just exciting for us. They're the favourites. Um, we've got nothing to lose. We, we go out there and we're just going to do our thing and uh, see how it stacks up. Barcelona, how do you like it? I love Barcelona. Um, yeah, obviously this will be my new home. Uh, I'm going to be moving here full time next year. It's my first time racing here in about 20 years, so I, I used to say our lasers here a bit, but it's been quite a while. Um, yeah, it's a great place as long as you um, sort of you learn a few of the traits out on the water. It's, um, if you can get your head around that, it should be good. Well, there we go. Some views uh, off the uh, race course uh, off uh, Barcelona. Uh, it's still light uh, breezes we're expecting to go at uh, 13.36 was the latest we had from the uh, race committee. Should uh, should be getting a race underway, but it's looking pretty light and pretty tricky, uh, Guillermo. Yeah, it's only four minutes to the warning. The good thing, Andy, is uh, the, the, the bearing to the top mark is 185. That means that the, the breeze already established from the south, which is the gradient wind, which, which is a the good direction for the for the breeze to, to build. So at least that, that's a good sign. It's still around six, seven knots, so it's very, very light. J1s, I guess, in most of the boats, only two kites. A1s, A15s, one staysail, maybe only one jib. You, you try to push the, the weight down as much as you can. You can, you can almost bet that Basco is going to be <laughs> close to the pin <laughs> because that, that's where he lives. Uh, uh, but, but as I said, the, the, the breeze from the south is a, is a good sign that probably we'll have two, two good races today. So that's encouraging. Indeed, uh, you, see, you see the uh, the breeze in the south end. We expect some thermal enhancement. We expect the, the breeze to build in the, as the, the land heats up. Yeah, the, the reality is that it's a good, good gradient in the Balearic uh, Sea. We, yeah. There is 15 to 19 knots from the from, from 190 to 1,000 uh, to true in direction. The, the, the only problem is that as, as it blows blowing from the south, Barcelona is a little bit on the shadow of, of Mallorca. So that that's why the, the south breeze uh, struggle to reach the, 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 Bar the Barcelona race course for, for a while, that's at the beginning it was flying from, from the east, but now that it's it's already moved to the south, I think it's going to to get a little bit more settled and slowly increasing. Indeed, I mean, people would appreciate the Barcelona, or sorry, uh, Mallorca's only 90 miles upwind and yet you still have the, the wind shadow effect. Yeah, and as we can see now, it's only one minute, one minute to the start, so everybody's shaking up and it's Double tax, plenty of maneuvers. Everybody's trying to to make themselves space for sailing with clear breeze. We, we all know in this very light air, being able to sail by 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 your own and make sure that your boat is go to full potential. It's it's crucial. So so everybody's playing for that and looks like the quantum and platoon they are fighting very aggressively for the pin. We will see how it ends up. A little bit of deja vu then, eh? <laughs> yeah, Platoon goes for the push. Quantum protects the, the pin. 20 seconds to go. Looks like Quantum is going to be able to protect it, but we, we don't know. But still, yeah, yeah. They, they, are, they are committed now, so Quantum very, very close to the line, but looks like they will have time to, to do the better way and have a decent start. Wow, they are early, I tell you. Quantum uh, platoon not quite getting off the line as well, just to windward there. We'll see, because 
we, 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 cannot, we, we don't have the, the timing extremely well here, so we'll have to see if, if there is any, any call from the, from the race committee. But if, if we're looking at the, the timing that we have and, and the, the time that they cross the line, look like quantum was early, but they are not coming back, so I'm assuming that the, the time on the screen was Lily Dog. So good, good, very good start for, for quantum racing now, leading the fleet going to the left. Decent start from Gladiator and uh, volume the looks of things as well. It's a big test for uh, Tina Platner then returning to the Super Series to the hot seat uh, steering Phoenix uh, for the first time since in fact it's Cape Town now, BJ. Big ask for her. Yeah, but, but Tina has been on, yeah, yeah. on, on this position a couple, couple times. It, it is true that, that she, she didn't do it for the last couple seasons but but she knows how to do it and and the, the, the team is well organized the boat is going well so she's she's well surrounded and I'm sure that that she will be able to do a, a very good job so sled on the extreme right quantum on the extreme left now they take over to control the fleet they are able to cross everyone they just cross gladiator right now in a very good control of the situation Gladiator will probably extend a little bit more and, and tag probably in, in the next 30, 40 seconds when they have a clear lane to go. And the whole fleet is going to the, to the right now where they, they do expect a little more compression on the, on the breeze next to the shore. So probably a little bit of pin bias. And that's why Quantum and Platoon, they were looking for it for the pin, but now the whole fleet is, except for Gladiator, is going, is going to the right. So a few words about the Gladiator team, uh, DJ. They were one of the uh, first teams in, uh, in year one and still going, and Tony Langley still loving it as much as ever. Yeah, Tony, Tony is, a, is a one of a kind guy. He's, he's He's so enthusiastic and he's so passionate about what, what he, he yeah. does. He's still and what do you see there on board the uh, Gladiator? Yeah. Well, we, we have a couple of, of teammates. Oh. We, we, have, we have Bruno, we have David yeah, yeah, from you Asura. Do. But you see who's steering? Yeah, Tony, Tony, Tony steering. No, no, it's, uh, Goody is supposed to be steering this week, I believe. I, I didn't know. I, I just got here, as you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. one hour ago, so <laughs> I was expecting Tony to be steering. But well, I, I believe that uh, ah. Paul Goodison is steering and what he's doing tactics. <laughs> well, that, that's very interesting. As I said... When you were saying he's one of a kind. As I, as I was saying, he, he's, he's a unique guy. He's, he's very passionate about what, what he does, and he, he, puts, he puts a lot of himself into, into this, and... He, he makes the decision, he, he doesn't particularly care about getting instructions on how to do things, he has his own style and he, he follows his rules. So when I was expecting him to tag, I, I, I thought that Goodison was there on, on doing tactics. Now that Tony is, Tony is doing the tactics, I don't know what to say. Indeed, it, it does seem to be working for them in the meantime. But of course, uh, Goody, a massively experienced uh, tactician and uh, Olympic gold medalist in his own right in the laser, I'm pretty sure he has a very strong understanding of what's going on in the race course in his own right. Uh, seems to be working for them just now. Tor, uh, can you hear us? Uh, how's things looking out in the water? Yes, Andy, there's a lovely steady breeze in here now where I am on the left-hand side of the course with Gladiator who have, who have really tried to bang a corner out here. Um, Quantum looking really nice and strong after that great start of their pin. I must admit, I was the same as you. I was wondering whether they're over, but um, it was a clear start and absolutely bang on from them there. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Vayu up there once again, uh, Gigi. Strong team, strong boat and a family team. Uh, Bayou is an interesting case because being a 2015 boats, we all know those, those boats are a little bit skinnier than the last generation boats. So they have a little bit, a little bit less riding moment, but at the same time, a little bit, a little bit less wetted surface. So in these light or gentle conditions, they, they perform 
extremely well and we don't know but that when the breeze is up they lack a little bit of stability so they they give up a, lo a little bit of performance compared to the latest generation boats but we all seen in this during this season that when they they race properly they they have the ability to be up there and win races so there's another boat to to take into consideration they still lacking a little bit of consistency in order to to win a to win a regatta but they they already showed that they can easily win races did they have uh, nick rogers back as tactician this regatta the normal tactician uh, was missing in scarlino when we had uh, manu weiler as the tactician on the value they had a pretty strong regatta overall but uh, going well just now platoon uh, getting up to third ended up not quite getting the start they wanted uh, Gigi. No, for sure. As, as we said, Vasco wanted the left. They, they, they were fighting the, the, the pin with, with Quantum at the end. Quantum prevailed and they, they, were, they, they, they had to tuck and, and go to the other side. And now they are, they are looking for a, for a free spot to, to, to sail and, and try to, to make up for the, for the loose ground. But now that they, they have the, the free wind, the, the they tuck again to the right, which is where every, everyone is is heading. We see, I think that's Paprek or Phoenix, the tucking tucking to the to the left because they are on the back of the fleet and they cannot they cannot afford to get to lane and because they know that somebody somebody will tuck on them. So when you are back in the fleet, you need to start thinking about tucking. Uh, around two minutes to two, 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 three minutes before Leyland in order to be able to to cross and have a clear lane and that's what Paprek just did. So Quantum still in a very much tight control of the situa situation. They they are taking the, the biggest advantage they have out of the out of the good start. The boat is seems seems to be going well and the only interesting point will be to see how the extreme left chosen by Gladiator works at the end. I mean, we'll see if, if they are ahead of Quantum or if Quantum is going to be prevailing at the at the top bank. Get on board with uh, Quantum. Anything interesting in what we're, we're seeing there? We've got Chris Hosking stepping in as uh, mainsail trimmer as of Scarlino. Yeah, the, 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 the most interesting thing is how, how far up the, the mainsail traveler is. Yeah. And, and the good thing is that you see how much load the, the rudder has. Even in six seven knots of wind, you can see that you, they have two, three, three degrees of, three degrees of, of, rudder, of, angle. of rudder angle, which is good because you, you put the appendages to, to work and to create lift. A little less than that, you go sideways. A little more than that is a little bit draggy. So between two and three is normally what you're looking for, and quantum is, is achieving that. So, so you get you get to that number by the by the load you can put with the main with the mainsail traveler. How much in you put the your your jeep glue, and then and then how much how much you press the boat in order to get to the hill that that creates the the, the, the rudder angle. And, and when everything is it's properly balanced, then then you get to that. We, we see here Phoenix with a little less of rather angle than, than Quantum, probably a little less breeze, but still has positive, positive numbers, which is always what, what you're looking for, but maybe a little bit less than, than, than their opponents. Indeed, and we've seen the Tina steering with uh, Paul Wilcox, the main sail trimmer. Yeah, with the cowboy hat, so maybe. <laughs> maybe. Go on. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean... Uh, Maybe she's coming straight from another event. No, I mean, Tina's big into her horses. Most people know that she's uh, she came back to riding horses first before she got back onto the boat. But certainly it's good to see her back. And she's had this... She has... Um, she's had this back problem pretty much uh, since 2020, I think. And uh, it's great to see her back. And she's followed the team... Uh, from afar and has been super proud of the way they've operated over the last couple of years. So now the whole fleet is heading heading to the left almost from the from the starboard leyland 
quantum in very tight control of this group. As we can see now, Gladiator's bet finally didn't pay off, so the, the ride was strong at the end. So probably, as we said, more compression, a little more, more pressure on the, on the ride. Uh, quantum controlling the fleet due to their good start. Uh, hello, Cole. Uh, and, and Phoenix with a good lane trying to, to get clear breeze to the, to the left. Here we can see Cole with the harness playing with the, the runner, trying to help also the rudder angle we were talking about. That, that's the other element that, that helped create in the rudder. We can see how much load it provides, uh, provides size, which is much more in line with what Quantum had. So Traveler very, very up. Tight mains and leech. Try to play with the, the heel angle the g club position and, and, and your and your runner. So Phoenix did a very good comeback from considering where, where they were. I think that they, they were lucky or they were very smart where they positioned themselves when, when they tag so they, they have the, the clear lane while most of the other boats had, had to make double tags except for quantum so Quantum and Phoenix are going to extend a little bit compared to the fleet. And once again, the, the two leaders of the circuit, they are, they are leading the race. So it's, it's getting... No coincidence. No, this it is not. But obviously, they are on Star Wars, so by the time Phoenix needs to cross, they will need to cross Platoon and Interlux and a bunch of folks on, on, on Star Wars by, by the time they tag. So... so they, they will have to extend a little bit in order to make sure that they can cross. Everything looks good in quantum racing. They are relaxed. They, they, they are laying the top mark. You can see that on top of their of the of the winch, of the primaries. So they are in control of the race, making the making the top mark. And we, we now we, we saw Phoenix that they were not able to cross platoon. They had to duck, so they will lose some some ground now. Interlodge in the mix as well. Yeah, no. what what do you say about that boat? <laughs> the, the, the boat. It's a good boat. It was the former. Yeah, it's it's a former Asura, so the boat it's it's a winner for sure. It's, you just <laughs> you press play. You, you <laughs> just need, you just need to let it let it sail. So whenever we, we all know it, we everybody is telling me that whenever they they are doing it properly, the boats seal very fast, and obviously they, they they need to they need to adjust a couple of of, of, of things in order to, to be more consistent and, and try to to improve in in terms of, of of being able to do the same stuff more oftenly, and then. They, they, they have a, a good tool in order to make that happen. So a good cross now in between Interlodge and the, the rest of the fleet on, on Star Wars. We'll see if they are able to cross Phoenix and Baju for sure. We will see if they are able to cross Alegre or not. So Tor, talk to us about the uh, top mark round. We're seeing Quantum round first. Yeah, it's been a really, really interesting few minutes here. Quantum have just managed to slip away, but the pack behind them is so tight. There's changes happening every second. Phoenix really losing out, trying to come in from, from the left there and having to duck um, behind Platoon and, and Interlodge. Now it's it's wrapped up in there, lots of close boat-on-boat -boat stuff, and actually, because the breeze is quite soft, they're struggling to get the boats back up to speed again, which is extending Quantum's lead. Allegra has managed to just sneak around outside on the ley line, is looking strong and coming in. In, in second, I think, um, which is good because they, they, their beat wasn't as, uh, as good as some of the other teams. Just watching uh, Phoenix tacking as well and Platoon. Platoon should get through there, do you think? Platoon will make it from there. They will tack Interlodge and we'll see what they do next. So they tack to Lure of Interlodge. And they are in a dangerous spot. Vasco in a dangerous spot. That's almost synonymous, right? <laughs> it is. It's also him coming in from the, from the left. It's almost <laughs> synonymous. And we call that protector mark the Vasco mark. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Quantum uh, leading around the top mark as uh, Tor just saying, extending, getting a nice ley line, nice 
angle into the mark. Getting the kite set nicely. Allegra, as we said at the top of the program, have the potential. They've been up uh, many times uh, in Scarlino. Vasco made the mark, but he's literally parked. It's going to be rolled by Provesa. And once they are rolled by Provesa, they will be probably rolled by Gladiator. So a little bit the same situation there with the uh, Phoenix. We're just And Phoenix, unfortunately, got the worst of the situation. They just made the mark, but they are making very little speed and they, they were rolled by the, the by the whole fleet so they are now trailing trailing the fleet and they have a lot of work to do if they if they want to come back in this race but we we are seeing that there's a lot more breeze on the on the beach and and there's it was a lot lighter at the top mark so the, the, what i can say is that the race is far from over and We'll see if someone someone does a jive, which is happening right now. And Quantum is very very quick to protect. I I was surprised that nobody jive earlier looking for the for the breeze on the shore, but Quantum was very very quick to to jive and protect the protect the left looking downwind very very quick in order to make sure that nobody sneaks ahead of them going to the shore and eventually or potentially getting a little bit more breeze. So now the the fleet is very split because half half of them is going to the right and the other half is going to the left. And that that and here's where the, the situations we were talking before the race are getting interesting. What can happen, everything everything can change in in a couple of minutes Andy. Phoenix coming in with that five point lead. That could be, uh, sorry, Quantum coming into the five-point lead. Phoenix, a five-point deficit, and that could ex be increased uh, significantly in this race if we can't pull back a few boats. Quantum Allegra going nicely at the moment to uh, change the rafter guard uh, in Scalino as well with uh, Will Ryan, Olympic medalist in the 470 coming in. I worked with uh, Nick Asher, Francesca Mongelli, navigator. Well at the yeah, another boat that showed the ability of winning races many, many times, but for one or another reason, they are lacking the consistency in order to win regattas, but it's a matter of time. If, if they keep pushing, the, the victory will come sooner or later. Now they extended a little bit, but now they are, they are jiving and converging to the, to the rest of the fleet, and we'll see how did the bed, the bed place now? They don't seem to be very, very light. So that that's a good that's a good thing for them. So Brevets has appear to have pulled up a couple of places as well. Yeah, accor according to the virtual, Provesa, especially because most of the fleet jive and they are all. Uh, very very right. tight tight and sailing sailing in a pack and, and we all know that the packs are always slow so if you are able to to avoid the maneuver in this in this condition and and sail your own race you normally you normally gain meters by sailing quicker but now they are they jive also and they pay the the price for the for the maneuver but they are they are still sailing by themselves which is a the, the good thing for them. We'll see if, if the shadow of the of the train that they have to windward still affects them or not. They don't seem to be very very power up. We can see how, how many people they they have to put to to lure in order to to heal the boat a little bit. But they, they have good separation. But in this in this breeze, even one minute and a half is it's on the edge of being not enough. So. Once, once the, the boats behind you jive, you you need to make the decision to continue for a for for, for a very long time be, be, before you start moving your yourself. Otherwise, you 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 end up in the middle of nowhere because you don't have enough separa separation and you end up with dirty breeze. But as we see there, Provesa was also forced to jive because Gladiator jive be, be behind them. 
So if they didn't jive there, they, 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 they were going to have to continue for almost another two minutes. So that's why they decided to, to take that position and jive where they did. In the meantime, Allegri is still sailing in decent breeze, 10.6 knots of boat speed. It's not a lot, eight knots, but it's not, it's not worrying. We can see that they, they don't have people hiking to Lua as they have on, on Provesa. Now they are moving a little more to the center of the boat, but still, in, on average, they have a little more breeze than, 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 the, than the Turkish boat. So good, good things for Allegri. I still think that Quantum is in control of the situation, but at, at, at least Allegri is, is in an attacking position. Allegra, one of the uh, we had three teams change their keel fins this, this season. Uh, Phoenix changed back before Portals. Allegra have stuck with theirs, the, both with the Bertine fins, and Quantum changed theirs to, uh, they have changed to an, an Artemis fin. But Allegra seems to be very happy with theirs. Yeah, it, it's strange because um, Phoenix changed, changed the appendages and they, they changed back to the original ones for Portals and they won in Portals. While at the same time, Allegre, they are very happy. I understand that SLED also made some changes and, and Quantum was the only one that went for the, for the kind of appendages we built, from, we built for 2020 mm -hmm. on Azurra. So, the, so the, what was the difference there? Or what's the, 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 the objective? The, I, let, let me go from the beginning. The reality is that in 2011, before, before the, the very beginning, before the, the, before the Super yeah. Series, we we made a bet with 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 Brolic to go to a boat that was very heavier oriented, while yeah. while Quantum went with with Botin for a much more lighter boat. Unfortunately for us, on the 2011, the season was. Uh, was not very was not very windy, so Quantum at the end won the season, and, and we we couldn't we couldn't fight in, in in certain conditions to them. So 2012 we we decide that we wanted to get the same the same tool that they had and try to beat them with the same tool they had. So we went for the same designer, and we from 2012 we we had the same boat, which is which was very good because we. We didn't have any disadvantage, but at the same time, we wanted to keep developing our boats mm -hmm. in, in order to, to have advantage to the rest of the fleet. So, so the disadvantage of going to Botin is that, on, I mean, in talking good about them, is that every time we were doing some development, they were sharing that development with the rest of the fleet. Mm -hmm. So, in 2000, for 2020, we, we knew that we want to do something different with the appendages with Botin in principle was not very was was not very uh, let's say they, they were not they were not agreeing a lot they, they, they were believing a little more in a more uh, let's say um, uh, la laminar uh, mm -hmm. appendages that means uh, appendages that they were perfect in ideal conditions and we were looking for more turbulent uh, appendages that that means ap appendages that they don't have the ability to go to develop the same top top end speeds mm -hmm. but but they they work a lot better in the middle of the range whenever you have wind uh, whenever you, you have wind change whenever you have waves whenever you have puffs or lulls or whenever you have shifts and especially maneuvering tacking and off the starts whenever Every time you are not at target, the turbulent appendages were getting in, into the work earlier than the so the flow than the laminar. Yeah, than the laminar. So we so we went for another company, which in this case we, we chose Artemis Technologies, and we developed these these appendages for 2020, and we were the only ones uh, using them. 
and obviously we were very happy with them because we won in we won in Cape Town by a margin we didn't experience before and, and also we, we won the 2019 2019 season we were already using these appendages by being the only ones that we were using them so so we we, we, we were really really happy with, with the changes we did and we were surprised that quantum were the only ones copying this or, or going this way and as far as I understand quantum is uh, is enjoying them and, and they are very very happy with them so as I said maybe they lack a little bit of top end speed but but on the average, they are a lot more forgiving, and they are they are they, they, they give you more opportunities to to play modes and, and sail in different modes, which is what you try to do when you are in a fleet like this. Mm -hmm. Imagine you you get off the start when you when you get off the start on starboard tack, unless you are the one on the pin. Nobody is selling targets for the first three, four minutes. Mm -hmm. So in those conditions, where you, when you are selling two, three, four, ten standard targets, these kind of appendages, they work a lot better than the laminar ones. And that's the family that we chose, that we believe they were working. And, and, well, and it seems that Quantum finally... It's working for them this year. Quantum went for the same family that we chose in 2019. So it took them three years, but they finally <laughs> got it. Fascinating. I mean, it's it's uh, the level of detail we never hear. So every day is a school day this week. But at the moment, Quantum uh, a good little lead over uh, Allegra. Interlodge then presumably then still have a, have the same keel family then as your, as um, Quantum now. Yeah, Interlodge has the same the yeah. same one. So so that that's why everybody also says that whenever they. They position they themselves well, and they, they they are in clear lanes, and and, and they put themselves properly. That the boat is still very quick, and I'm, yeah. and I'm very sure the boat is still capable of winning, of winning regattas. I'm pretty sure about it. It's so getting down towards the uh, the leeward mark. Quantum leading Allegra second into Lodge Pavetsa. Seem to be hanging in there for fourth. They sure they'd be happy with that if they could be coming down the uh, in the next run and getting through the line in fourth. But uh, a nice mark round in Gigi. Yeah, I, I, it, it was a tidy manoeuvre for, for Quantum, for sure. I think that the, the end, the, the run was pretty even because Allegri was is mainly at the, the same distance that they were at the, at the top mark. Provesa, I, I think that they, they gain a little bit by, by going to the middle of the fleet and compared to the train that we were talking about earlier, they are going to the right hand mark looking downwind and they will they will round at the end, they will round. By the time that Interlops ends the, their turning, Provesa will be very, very close to Interlops with the advantage of no, not having to sail to lure of most of the kites. So, so they will sail in a little more clear breeze. But Interlux has the advantage of going straight to the right, which is the, the side that was uh, beneficial on the first on the first bit because of the compression of the shot that we were talking about. The problem now is that Provesa cannot attack because in the area of the of the lure gate, there's as as the whole fleet uh, was going through there. There's, there's like a bubble of all of the spinnakers, so in this very light there. I mean, if, if you go to the right-hand mark, you need to extend at least for a minute before you can tack, otherwise you, you, you will tack and you will be losing ground to both ends for, for the next two minutes. So it's a, it's a very important decision which gate to go in this in this light breeze because once you commit to one of one or the other corner, you need to stay there for at least one and one and a half minutes. Platoon is heading to the same same place, one minute more or less, and Vasco is now, now going to the right. And he was lucky he didn't fall to the water this time. <laughs> He's improved. <laughs> Talking about unique characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tony, Vasco, 
It'll be interesting to see Tony and Barco sailing together. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they seem to have made that gain on uh, Interlodge for the meantime. And uh, they have a particularly special coach this week, uh, the Vexa. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I don't want to give, give things for granted because I, I said that Tony was steering and he's not, but I'm almost sure Santi's on the coach boat <laughs> on Provesa this, is, yeah. this week. He doesn't, he doesn't want to be called a coach. He, he likes to be called an observer. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he, yeah, he, he, he's on Provesa's coach boat and he has, he's almost blind, but he still managed to see to see many many things that nobody else is able to see so Fantastic. obviously having Santi there is, is very very useful I honestly don't know how how does he do because he, he doesn't even see a mark oh, really? he, he doesn't even see anything but he still noticed things that nobody else is that so he's a very talented guy and with the and with the multi hulls he he, de he developed over the years a very special talent to to, to decide which is the best side to go from a strategic point of view about going right or left for the breeze I think he's, he's one of the best ones in the world then obviously how to position yourself in the micro compared to other boats it's, it's, it's a different story but putting putting your your head that, out that of the boat that was what at the time wasn't it when you were saying that he really he was great in the, the big picture he was just learning the boat for boat stuff and in the 52s which was yeah. relatively new to him and then of course through the, the course of the season things improved and improved for, for sure he's not stupid at all and no, he's no. a very fast learner so yeah, yeah. so it only took him one one year to to figure it out and on the second year we were winning the we were winning the season with him so so it's, it's not that he didn't know how to position ourselves it yeah, yeah. was that this is a this is a particular fleet and and you need to know all the players in order to try to anticipate how they will they, how they will play on what what they will do in order to position yourself mm -hmm. in advance and santi was lacking that on the on the first yeah. season but obviously as we said he he's he's, he's not very stupid <laughs> And he learned it very fast, and, and his talent is, is still intact. So he's, he's, he's amazing uh, watching or spotting the breeze, and he, he, he sees things that at least many, many other guys cannot see, for sure. And, the, and the, this is his European base, isn't it? He lives in Barcelona? He, he has a house in Barcelona. He, ha he, he has now a house in Brazil. He, he likes to live everywhere except for Buenos Aires that he, he almost lives in a boat but at Santi yeah he, he loves Barcelona he he has a house here for many years he he had his surgery in Barcelona and he yeah. had many many friends here in Barcelona so Barcelona for sure is a very special place for him and, and you shouldn't be surprised if, if you see him uh, joining his main main sports on team for the America's Cup once once he finished the games. Mm. So Phoenix a little bit deep after that, uh, not making the top mark at speed. Yeah, unfortunately, not a very good uh, final of the first bit for them. They didn't manage well how to get into the into the first mark, and they are paying a big price for that. And, and now they are taking taking a little bit of chances because they have they have they have not too many other options so they are tucking into the left and trying to see if they can find something else on that on that side we we see we saw Paprek that they had a penalty on the on the previous gate so they, they are they, they, they have plenty of advantage with them and they, they only had Baju behind so they are taking their chances they, they were being tucked by Gladiator and Provesa also, so they were in their tier, so they didn't have too many, too many other chances. So that that's what they have to do. So I don't know what happened to Provesa because they were. I don't know if the tracker is lost, lost signal for a, for a little while, but Provesa is, is losing ground. Uh, they they were fourth at the at the gate, so I'm assuming they are 
there in the in the, in the in the same position because they were all all going to the right. But Quantum still doing what what they have to do. They are controlling the fleet. They are giving very very little leverage to to Allegre, so they Allegre doesn't have a lot a lot to to to, to I mean to, to gain from from that position. And Quantum now tax. Provesa recover fourth fourth position from eight in ten seconds. So, yeah. so I'm sure they have a pretty pretty good gas <laughs> and they, they are back in fourth position so so the, the race is going slide ch slide chipping away in fifth yeah slate Sle Sle trying to get the most out of the possibilities they, they will be fighting for with platoon for for the fifth position they are very very close uh, but i think that the the first four boats are uh, a, a little bit far away from, from reach for both sled and platoon. So uh, I kind of think that Quantum has a pretty safe lead, same as Alegre. Third position, it, it's still a guess in between Provesa, Provesa and Interlodge. And fifth position, it's another guess in between sled and platoon. Then we'll have to see if the next thing is if Phoenix is able to, to come back a little bit from the, the rate currently position. The release does seem to be uh, staying in quite nicely. Uh, I, I, I would guess that there is at, at least eight knots now because most of the crews are fully hiking and that's normally in the eight you, you need at least eight knots to, to have everyone, everyone hiking, which is a, a good sign. We were saying at the at the beginning of the of the race that at least having the breeze from the from the south, it was a it was a good sign, and and luckily it, it is holding now, and we are having a pretty pretty decent pretty, pretty decent race. We've seen we just seen how uh, Allegre attack on Interlodge. So that, that means that Interlodge was, was making good progress from, from the shore. So they, they, were, they were very, very close to, to Alegre. In fact, Alegre had to tack on their breeze and they, they, they forced it to the, to the right again, while Provesa elected to tack a little earlier in order to, to avoid a couple more tacks and, and try to, to sail clean to the, to the next, to the next lane and trying to get to the next top mark trying to minimize the, the amount of maneuvers they are doing. Quantum, once again, is aiming at the offset mark, so they are probably not making the top mark or, or just, but they are they are making the offset mark, so they are in, in a very co controlling position, assuming so nobody, nobody can do anything from, from where they are. Vasco's doing the same, trying to minimize tax. So they are giving up a little bit of, of the right in order to, to make sure that they have the clear breeze and they, they, they can sail their own race. While, as we said, Allegre and Interlos, they had to make a couple tax that allowed Provesa to gain a little bit on Interlos and also to, to get a little closer to to Allegri. If we see at the tracker, and if we trust the tracker now, Provesa is only 20 meters away from Allegri. They are still behind, but they they recover a lot compared to where they, they were doing, only by avoiding those two tacks, as we said before. So it's a little bit, when, when you are not, when you are not leading, on, or when you are not the one who can decide where to position yourself, you need to you need to make your trade. You need to say, okay, should I go to the right, which is the favorite side, knowing that I may have to pay to two tax, or sell a little dirty, or should I give two minutes away from leverage from the from the extreme right ley line and bet to, to, to sell clean and avoid tax? Depending on the venue, depending on the wind conditions, depending on the tide, depending on many things. Sometimes depending on luck. One, one, sometimes it's better one option, someone, sometimes it's better the other one. 
This time, with light breeze, looks like what Lovesa did is so far giving them good results. So we'll see. We'll see if they are able to capitalize it with, with Allegri in the next cross or not. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, watching uh, Quantum approaching the uh, the windward mark at or. Yes, Quantum just coming up here. I, I believe Maria um, moved the top marks left 10 degrees. They're now at 195. So, um, yeah, Quantum have had, taken advantage of the, the that, getting to, getting to know early, having clean drop, going right at the at the bottom. And then, yeah, really, really nice beat from them. They've extended their lead on Allegri, and it's, I think it's a bit of a case of the rich get richer. They've not been uh, having to worry too much about any boat on boat stuff so they've been they've been able to sail their own race now so a yeah, comfortable lead for a quantum then they'll straight barely set for them at uh, the offset mark yeah whenever every time you have that kind of lead you you normally do a very well set and wait until the second one Second one holds. If if you really want to do a jive set, you set and do an early jive, which is a cleaner maneuver. And, and if not, you, you just hoist, wait, and if the second one makes a sandok, and you, you see before they 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 hoist, so, so you can even jive before they they finish they finish the hoist. But otherwise, you just you just do a normal set and and wait and see what, what, the, what the rest of the field does. In this case, Allegri follows, so, so they will probably continue a little bit more on starboard before they, they, before they jive. So... A little bit of a gap back to the Provetta, but then it's still pretty tight behind, isn't it? Yeah, but let, let's remember that Provetta was fourth at the, at the, at the lower gate, so they gain one position to interlodge and they, they recover a lot of ground to, to Alegre, so in fact it was, a, it was a good game for, for Provenza on this, on, this, on this leg, same as Platoon. We were, we were talking about who was going to be fifth if Platoon was led and, and, and Platoon, Platoon, is, Platoon is currently going to be fifth. I cannot see Sled now in the in the picture. And, and Provetza is missing on the on the standings, but Provetza is in third, Interloch, Interloch is in fourth, Allegri is in second. And as we said, yeah, Platoon is Platoon is in fifth, very, very close to to sled and to internet so so i would say that four fifth and six are still open open to to play and Provesa has a chance with with allegre if they attack and they do it properly and they they jive in advance and depends a little bit how how they play the last run so interest interesting run to to watch stay cell zone that means at least in some boats, you see, sled doesn't have the staysail yet. Platoon just open. In this case, it is tough because the the area of the staysail is free. So, so if you if you get too ambitious, you you make a very big staysail. The problem is that in this very light breeze, you you cannot you cannot use it because it it doesn't feel or or takes too much wind from the from the spinnaker. So you you can see. Sled are not using the staysail, but, but Platoon, yes, and Quantum was using the staysail. If you make it very small, you can use it in seven knots, but then in 14, 15 knots, you are looking a little bit or, or sail area. And, and the reality is, if you make it too big, it doesn't make a lot of sense, because in the, in the, in the heavy breeze, you leave the jib up. In more than anything more than 18 knots, 17, 18 knots, you end up leaving whatever. If, if you are with the heavy jeep, let's say a, a code 3, 
you, you leave the jib up for sure. If you have the J4, it's, it's a no-brainer, you leave the jib up. So the area of the staysail dictates a little bit the range of the of the wind that you are designing the sail. In this case, we see the four boats with the staysail on, quantum with the staysail on, and sled was the only one without the staysail. So, so probably, I, I would I would think that uh, sled had the biggest staysail of this group. So the the biggest the staysail, the more wind you need to to make it to make it work properly. But if if all these boats are using their staysail, that 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 means that they have at least eight knots. That's normally the breeze, the bottom breeze that you you start considering this sail. Otherwise, you, you leave it roll it or you don't, you don't even coist it. So very important in the in the starboard now. Provesa is jiving. Allegri is electing not not to protect. So it's very important in this starboard jive. If if you want to protect, you you need to play as low as you can. Probably uh, Allegre. There are two options. They they didn't want to to protect because they like the right, which is which is difficult to understand considering that the, the whole fleet jive or that they didn't feel strong enough for a match. In, in order to feel strong enough for a match, you need to be, you, you need one of the two. You, you need to be a, or a little bit to lower of the, of the boat behind you to, in order to match or you need to start the jive, let's say half a second, one second before your op opposition. If you don't have two of them, you normally you normally lose the match. So Allegri most probably didn't feel strong enough to to match. So they they have to they they have to continue. In order to be strong for the match, as soon as you from the hoist, you need to be pushing as low as you can, in order to make your 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 boat behind struggle, tra trying to follow you and trying to. Stuck the stuck the the boat in your in your windward wake, which is normally slower, and pushes the the the, the air boat to windward. So you slowly gain a little bit of gap, and and then you are and then you are strong for the drive. If you if you don't, if you are not able to do that, then as you can see, you, you need to do what what Allegre did, and they are now now they are forced to extend because they they have a lot of boats going to the other side. So it's a big bubble of of wind. So they need to extend for one minute and a half. Of, of we're talking in the last run, more or less, in order to be able to jive and and have clear breeze. But now they are in an, a little uncomfortable situation. Could play. I mean, it, it could end up well for them. But obviously they are assuming a big risk because they are a little bit too far away from quantum to, to make an attack and they, they have four opponents or three opponents on the other side attacking them. So they, they have at, at the moment they have nothing to win and they have potentially two or three places to lose, which is which is always a, a risk. And that that's what I'm talking every time we were talking about consistency and how to win the season. It's all about the little details. It's about the hoist and trying to gain one meter to lure of the boat behind you it's in every maneuver, in every jive, in every every hoist, every staysail deploy. You need to try to gain one meter, one meter, one meter, because in this case, one meter and being able to match a jive and to be able to be strong out of the jive could potentially mean two, three places, two, three places can decide the season as we saw in the last year and, and we saw in the past so so every very every little detail is very very important so it, it, it's very it's crucial that the whole team the, the whole crew is aware of what we are looking for in every maneuver and the whole 13 14 people respect, whoever they are it's kind of what quantum do best doesn't it so yeah quant a lot of the time quantum obviously it's it's a uh, it's, it's it's a very good team. We are not going to discover that at this stage. They, yeah. they they won they won four seasons already, and they they know what they are, what they are doing in this in this particular fleet. I think it's only them and Sled had won season so far. So so they are obviously the favorites because 
they did it, they know how to do it, and, and they did it not only once, not only two, but four times. So they, they know what, what do they have to do in order to, mm -hmm. to win the season, which is not that easy to learn. I mean, it took us, took us like six or seven seasons of yeah. pushing, pushing, pushing in order to be ready, to be mentally ready, to be physically ready, to have the equipment ready, to have, because it, it, it's all together. You have to design your sales in order to be consistent you, because you want them to be light, but you want them to last. You want them to perform, but you, you don't want them to, to break. Same as with the equipment. You want it to be quick, and you want, but they cannot break in the breeze. You cannot lose positions. You cannot abandon a race. You cannot lose positions because of year failure. So, so the balance of everything is very, very important. And what, that's the amazing thing about this this series for me. I mean, it, it, it's like a big marathon, and, and you know you are racing a marathon from the, from the from the first race in May until the last race in October. So it's 50 races of being consistent and trying. If you are six, trying to finish fifth, no, no, not putting a flyer, trying to get to gain four positions and potentially losing two. So. So you, you, I mean, it's a, it's a fascinating, fascinating game, and hopefully, I will play in again soon. Indeed, I mean that that was the kind of point with there's a kind of supposition that uh, you know quantum are the quick and boat in the water, and that's why they win. It was interesting talking to Chris Hosting, who joined the team for the first time in Scarlino, and he was just saying the difference really is everybody's doing their job at 100 percent all the time, always looking to do it a little bit better whatever it is you're doing on the team whether you're the sail maker or the, you know the, the backup team the everything everybody's working towards winning and uh, it's all about the consistency but uh Provezzo seem to be making a small gain relative to allegri what do you think ah, Provezzo, as we said they 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 i mean they they took the air jive and and they did what they the, what they have to do in order to to gain the position. Then if, if it's enough or not, it's yet to be seen. But as we said, Allegri took a big risk and now from being second in a very comfortable situation by making the two extra attacks on the beat at the end of the beat and losing some ground and then not being able to protect on a, on a Simo Jive to Provesa on the run. Now they are they are I mean they are tight. They, they made up keeping the second position. They are still they are still there. They, they can jive on top of Provenza, but for sure that now they have their hands full trying to protect second second place instead of cruising safely into into that spot and trying to prepare next race. And yes, as you said, on, on Asura we we were about 22, 23 people if we if we take took into consideration the cook, the sailmaker, the the boat builders, the riggers, the the coaches, the the, the physios, and everything, and everybody was there to win. I mean, you need everyone to be focused on the same same page and and work as a team in in order to have a real chance to to win. And that 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 means getting through the bad days. Yeah, but that, yeah, that, 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 that's also the definition of a team. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you are a group of people, and, and there's a big difference between a group of people and a team. Mm -hmm. and, and it takes a lot of time. That, that's, that's what I think that Quantum and ourselves in the past were able to, to achieve in a better way than, than the opposition. And that's why we, we prevailed for so many years. So Quantum uh, coming down towards the finish line, looking like they'll take first blood in the uh, 52 Super Series uh, Barcelona Sailing Week. Historic return to Barcelona where the 52 Super Series started back in 2012. And the uh, series leader this season, winners of uh, three regattas so far, each of them in fact with uh, owner driver Doug DeVos on the helm. He's indeed uh, back 
steering as he was in Scarlino. So they should uh, take this win as they say it's still close between Kovetsa and Allegra behind. We're watching to see how much uh, Phoenix can recover, if anything more, though in seventh. Tina Flatner's first race in Super Series since uh, 2020. A little bit of a baptism of fire, it's always going to be the case. Yeah, but at least I recovered one one position, which is which, which is what you have to do when you yeah. when you are in that spot. If you are eight and you can you can get up to seven, that that's what you have to do. And as you can as you were able to see, Quantum dropped their their stencil earlier. They they drop in, in a I mean they, they did it in a very tidy way now they take care of the spinnaker they are already thinking in, in the next the next race and that that's that's exactly what you, what you should do when you are here for, for the series it looks like allegre has a has a little margin over Provesa. they are also on starboard so we'll see it's going to be close but i still think that allegre will be able to snatch they have, let's see, they, they have with the speed differential, but obviously Provesa will be under risk, but I think that Allegri will be just, just ahead. Indeed, that seems to be the case. So Allegri taking second, Provesa third, made some good gains in terms of positions and uh, distance on Allegri coming down that final run. I think Ergen Imre will be quite happy with that. Allegri, as we said. They made their, their lives a little bit more little difficult little than normal. It's not difficult than necessary, yeah. but, but at the end, they were able to to protect. Looks like Vasco is going to finally be able to take fourth place, which is a, a good position for them, considering how they were at the Off at the, the beginning of the of the race. But they should come up now if they want to cross the line ahead of Slade, but, but they should be able to do it. It was a close one in between Sled and the Interlodge. Interlodge, Interlodge uh, I think the end. we'll see what Maria saw because Vasco was was in the middle of in the middle of them, so I don't know if yeah. Maria was able to, to watch properly but but I, I'm sure she's used to seeing this kind of finishes and, and she knows how, how to judge it properly. Indeed so Interlodge third at the top mark, finishing sixth. In the end, as you said, it was all going to be close for these uh, four, five, six. Coming down that, uh, certainly coming down that final run. It was. Phoenix getting seven. Yep. And we'll see if Gladiator or Baju could finally get the eighth position. I think it was Gladiator prevailing, but I, I cannot see where Baju is at the moment compared to them, so we'll see how, how it how it finishes. Juan Pablo Mar racing all the way through the fleet, really. Juan Pablo Marcos also, another Azurra member on the bow of Phoenix, doing their job, another very good and talented sailor. Baju in eight, Lilit in front of Gladiator. So not, not the best beginning of the of the regatta for Tony as a tactician, <laughs> but but I'm sure he will give us some emotion emotions during the week. <laughs> and uh, a tough one for the uh, French team on uh, Paprec. Yeah, uh, as far they ended up doing turns, didn't they? And that. Yeah, they they did turn in the first gate, and as far as I read. On the on the super serious side, this this morning they they have a new team and it's it's not. It's they have, not they exact, have a temporary team. They have it's uh, not exactly the team that will be racing next year. Okay. So it, it's very very hard to put a, yeah. a a group together for one regatta and and have hopes of performing well. So probably they they are using this opportunity to get used to the boat, see how it works, taking notes and making sure. That the transition to the 
to the definitely team it's it's a little smoother than trying to to start selling from scratch in this in this boat but I, I think that Pietro Mantovani is there as a second bowman he he was the boat captain of the of the of the previous owner so so he he knows the boat and he he knows exactly how how it works so I'm sure he's there to transferring all the experience to the to the French team and are you looking good for the uh, the circuit for next season yeah, for sure having 10 10 competitive boats and I heard again that the, 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 the AGM, the annual general meeting of the class was held yesterday and some important decisions were made also in, in order to, to, to try to, to make sure that new boats or new owners are, are coming into the circuit next year. It's, going, it's, it's, it's in the right direction and hopefully we'll, yeah. we'll keep the competition in, in 10 boats or more. I think it's, it's a in good health. It's, it's very, very good considering the level of the fleet that we are talking about. So just the uh, race result there for the first race here in Barcelona. First, Quantum Racing. Second, Allegra. Third, Gravetza. Fourth, Platoon. Fifth, were Sled. Interlodge in sixth. Phoenix in seventh. Vayu in eighth. Gladiator in ninth. And Patrick uh, finishing in tenth place. But uh, good to get a race away almost on time we were due to go at one one o'clock we ended up going at 1 30. but Gishe, good to see the breeze and hopefully we should get another race fairly uh, fairly quickly yeah i think that maria will let us know by the by the whatsapp group very quick what what her intentions are but i'm assuming by three o'clock we'll have another, another what did, what did another we learn about the race course i think that it, it was pretty much as expected the the the, the southerly breeze breeze it's normally the the right is strong because the the breeze compresses next to the shore and and you find normally a little more breeze and and you tack on starboard and normally have a little bit of right hand shift and on the runs you, you i i would try to think that you you could see the same because um, provesa provesa who who jive earlier than Allegre made a little gain on them and almost overtook them on the last run. So I think that whoever can get first to the right on the beat will have the advantage. The problem is, as, as we saw in the last race, looked like the the line was favored on the pin, which is a good thing that Maria do, or that Maria does normally does when when you have a when you have a. a, a a place, a course that is very favor favored to the right. Normally, you put a little bit of, of bias on the pin to make the ta tacticians bet and and make the fleet split a little bit. Otherwise, everybody will be try to to start on the committee and tag. But but if you put the pin and favor it, then then you have to decide which is which is more important: the the initial gain on the on the bias on the or the the late gate on the on, on the breeze. I think that Quantum read it perfectly this time because they took the bias and they were able to tack awesome. very, 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 very soon. Yeah. And, and they just closed glad, uh, the uh, cross gladiator and from there on they were able to command the race and they didn't have any any problem to win the, the race by a comfortable margin. So Indeed. it was very, very tidy execution by them. So that's uh, that's our first race uh, done and dusted. As we say, a win for uh, Quantum Racing, the re regatta leaders now and uh, the circuit leaders. We're going to take a short break and we'll join us uh, for race two in a few minutes. We hope.
Welcome back to uh, the Real Club Nottingham to Barcelona. We're going into race two in just a few minutes' time. Good first race uh, in the end. Eight knots of breeze, quantum racing winning. We're going to uh, Lars Booking, our marketing communications director, and one of the co-founders of the Super Series. Lars, take us back to 2011, that winter when uh, they had seen the Med Cup uh, dissolving and disappearing. You had a great faith in the class and the vision for the future. I think in 2011, uh, 2011, at the beginning of the season, the Audi Med Cup was already struggling because the number of boats was going down and Audi was insisting, also coming up with the idea to go to the Lake Garda, to go to Kiel. And at that moment, you know, you could feel a little bit that they, as a main partner, were losing a little bit the interest in the... In the in the in the Met Cup as a, as a sailing event, and so in Cartagena, I think we were missing two or three boats, and there already the discussion started to say, okay, maybe we'll uh, we'll leave the circuit, and so we started thinking a little bit about the the future. I mean, the key thing was the Med Cup was really not an owner circuit in any size, shape, or form. In the end, they were kind of the pawns in the piece, and uh, really, Super Series emerged as something which was driven by the owners in in every sense of the word. No, at that, at that time, you know, the concept was totally different. It was very much about, you know, what Audi wanted to sell. It was very much about high tech, the technology in general, then going to the strategic important markets. And at that point, you know, as Spain was struggling. And they said, OK, maybe it's not the right decision to spend so much uh, selling time in Spain. Maybe we have to go to some other venues. But they were trying to take the decision without asking the teams and without asking the owners at that time. So you had this vision for a super series which is driven by the owners. I mean, 2012, we, uh, we were here and uh, Steve Hale's being knocked over in the, uh, in the RAN racing. But... Uh, we're going to go start. We're actually going to go start racing very, very shortly, Lars. But we'll come back to you with these uh, this theme of the uh, this very beginning, the genesis of the 52 Super Series, celebrating 10 years uh, here in Barcelona. But we're going to go back onto the water uh, and uh, see how things are looking there. So, uh, Tor Tomlinson, the uh, breeze looking like it's uh, stayed in. We've still got about eight lots of breeze, something like that. We're going into the uh, the second race. Yeah, we're just coming up to two minutes here. We've just been monitoring the wind a little bit. It's up, up and down a bit, feeling a little bit softer than, than the last race maybe. But yeah, it's going to be a difficult one for the teams. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Indeed, uh, still, uh, still decent conditions by the looks of things. Uh, we need to see some, uh, some teams starting to come back. Quantum winning that race, winning it quite comfortably. I mean, the key contenders are obviously Phoenix going away with the seventh in that race uh, and also uh, Sled and Platoon who are challenging for uh, third place. Need to start putting some, uh, some points on the board and winning races. But uh, I think uh, we're going to see the, the start being close uh, as previously. Gigi, it was all about the start that last race, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pretty much decided by the start. Now now it looks like Platoon is a lot more aggressive with a lot, lot more time to go, trying to make sure that they they get that left hand left hand side of the of the starting line. It's 28 seconds to go, so they are all the fleet on final approach. It looks like it's very, 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 very light, so every team is launching very early to make sure they get to the to the line at full speed, otherwise you pay a big price by the time of the, of the gun. Platoon already going, up, going full speed. Looks like a very clear start. In fact, the most of the fleet was a little bit late this time, so we'll see how it works and if Platoon is able to do the same as Quantum was able to do in the first one. It looks like Quantum has the uh, edge a little bit further forward than the fleet, a little bit to windward of, of Platoon. So Platoon, I don't think they are, they are able to tack at this stage, but we will have to wait a little bit to see how things develop and and, and find out if they are able to, to tag and cross, or if they will have to wait and 
wait, wait for the other ones to talk, talk, and then follow them. Jordi Calaf out there at the back of the boat, the uh, strategist, won his uh, 470 Olympic gold medal here. Says it was so long ago he can barely remember, but that uh, is a certain modesty in Jordi's part. But an interesting dynamic with him and, uh, and Vasco. Yeah, it's it's. I I think it's an ex explosive combination potentially in a, in in every in every in every possible direction. So so if they if they are both connected and into into the same page, they they can be a very very hard to beat combination. They are two extreme extremely talented sailors, but obviously we all know both of them are very temperamental. So. So we, we hope that they, they stay in, in good symphony and they, they bring good things for the team, which I, I, I think it took a little bit of races in Scarlino, but by the second half of, yeah. the, of the regatta, they, they were the, the better scoring boat of the, of the regatta. So now they are, they are slowly making gains by being the boat to lower. So I'm expect they are already able to cross values, so I'm expecting that, that as soon as quantum tax that I, I would expect platoon to tag to tag quick unless that they they don't feel as strong as as we see from here then and they are not able to cross but otherwise I, I expect them to quick to tag fairly quick nice shots in the main seal there and seeing the uh, so here they go the track main seal track quite high And they're attacking in the light breeze like that. What's what's the key focus? Uh, the, the, the traveler, the traveler movement is is crucial, and and the crew weight is crucial. So you you have to play the the sails very 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 smoothly. You need to make sure that you you keep the mainsail as high as possible to the very last moment. And and once you 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 cross head to wind, you. you you take the traveler to the side as quick as you can in order to power up the boat and in the same time move all the all the crew in, in perfect co coordination to make sure that you play with the weight and you move the boat in a in a balanced way in order to to load the boat to, to both sides. If you do it properly you you can make a, a lot of a lot of good meters gain compared to other boat that, that makes an average start. We on on Azur on the last last couple of seasons we we connected the the traveler to the to the back pedestal so we were so we were switching the traveler with the back pedestal in an over in an over in an over gear and I mean in a very very fast gear so we were able to move the traveler really fast I was surprised to see that that platoon is still doing it manually because it takes a lot more time and you, and you need to put a big guy there on the back of the boat to pull the, a lot, a lot, plenty of meters of rope in order to make it happen. Well, I've just had news from the uh, the race course that the race has been uh, abandoned, I believe, and uh, November over Alpha, meaning there'll be no no further racing today, unfortunately. That's the information we've just had, but uh, the team's electing to sail on for the meantime, I think. Might as well carry on in the uh, in the meantime and get their settings and uh, see what's going on. I don't know whether they've had that information, but we just definitely had the information on our uh, WhatsApp group from the race committee. So disappointing then uh, for Platoon having made a nice start. So far, everyone is continuing. So, so they didn't, didn't didn't listen on the on the radio on the information we have on the on the, on the WhatsApp it hasn't been broadcast yet. But now we see that Gladiator has stopped and dropped the jib. So, so it looks like everybody will pull out of the race in a very short period of time. But maybe they want to wait and see 
which one was crossing the front, if it was quantum yeah, or, 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 or platoon or interlocks to lower of the whole fleet. It was a good start from the uh, the platoon then from the Harmony Spears team, double uh, world champions. He's been on the podium uh, for the circuit, I think, about four times. May indeed manage to squeeze uh, a third uh, out of this season, but uh, we'll be disappointed. And I'm sure actually the Phoenix team will be disappointed not to be getting a second race in today, having had uh, that seventh place. And I think that uh, from their point of view, the more races the better, as indeed that was what uh, Victor Mourinho was saying. The runner trimmer uh, on platoon wanting as many races this week as possible. Obviously, yes, but unfortunately, as, as you were saying, now Quantum is pulling away, so that's officially race is abandoned. But it was interesting, Platoon didn't have the kind of cross that Quantum had in the first the first race that they were able to tuck and cross on port ahead of everyone, and they, they had to wait for the opposition to tuck and, and see how it was. And, and they were in a good position, yes, but they, was, they were not as comfortably in the lead as Quantum was in the first one. I, in fact, I think it was going to be tight if you, if you look at Interlodge now and where Quantum was at the moment they retire and where Platoon is now, I think it was going to be tight at the, at the top mark. As we were saying at the end of the, of the first race, when the right hand side is favored and the, and the pin end is, is also favored, Many times there is a trade-off that you, you have to judge it perfectly in order to to make the right call. In the in the first race, seemed like winning the pin was the right move. In the second one, it was a little more a little more neutral, I would say. But it, it was a good test for the teams to at least have a feel for for the race course. Have have one have one, one race under the belt for sure in, in, a, in a week that it looks like it's going to be challenging mm -hmm. and, and having a feel of how the boats are going in this very light stuff and prepare, prepare for tomorrow. So unfortunately we'll have to wait for another 24 hours to see these beauties racing again. <laughs> I'm talking about the boats. Exactly, but I mean... Uh you know, when I say beauties, I'm talking about the votes. Yeah, not me. <laughs> but I mean, the, <laughs> not the crew. Just, just to, to emphasise, I mean, the reason we're here is to celebrate 10 years of the circuit. It's not the best venue for uh, for the sea breeze. We do get a, a, a sea breeze generally, but we not get the same kind of conditions as we enjoyed in in Palma late season last year and uh, other places. But the the key focus this week, I say, is being back where the. Uh, the circuit first start. We were talking with Lars beforehand. I mean, obviously you were instrumental in the transition from uh, Med Cup to um, Super Series. Alberto Romers and the Romers family were one of the three uh, stakeholders initially. What was your take on it at the time? What was the what were the, the downsides for you of the Med Cup, and uh, what were the the positives coming out uh, into the uh, into the Super Series? It's it's all about owners, wasn't it, at the beginning, and it's remained that that's remained the case. Yeah, I, I think that the, the biggest difference in between the Med Cup and the previous events were, was that we were having our own race committee and our, yeah. our, our own staff. So we, we got to very, very constant or stable decisions and organizations and methods. So we, we, we got used to a way of racing, which Every time we were going to race uh, regattas at different yacht clubs, we were using different methods, different people, different ways of running the events. So it was a little more random. So that 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 that's what I think was the best thing about the the Met Cup. Obviously, then the sponsors, as as Lars was explaining, they were trying to get more and more uh, about what what they were looking for but that was not necessary uh, in the 
in, into the same direction of the best, um, best venues. Ra racing racing yeah. venues, but they, they were trying to get to nice venues or spectacular places or glamorous places. And with the advantage of going back to the to the Super Series is was that we kept the best of the Medcap, which I think was keeping our own stuff and making our own regattas. Autonomous and doing it and way. Even even at the beginning, obviously, we, we have we have the, the, the Lars Lars uh, was calling it back to basics. We were going back to yacht clubs to support with the organiz I mean with the with the equipment, but we were using our staff. We were using our measures. We were using our race committee. We were using our Empire. our um, umpires, and that, 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 that I think that that was fundamental to to change a little bit the way we were racing before and after Medcap and 52 Super Series. So we kept the best of the Medcap, and we tried to combine the best sailing venues and venues where the owners wanted to go and trying to get the best mix or combination of that. And looking backwards and looking at the amount of places if we go, we, we went and the amount of new venues we discovered together, I think it was a very successful uh, story and, and that the, every everybody who who has participated in the Super Series enjoyed. I mean, it's enjoyed great. A lot. The, the French team back. I mean, they were here in 2012, or they joined the circuit. Um, I think two or three events in, but they've been they've been with us pretty much uh, ever since. And it's great to see them back. But I mean, this is us um, in in 2012. Uh, there you go. There you see the Azura Quantum. Happy days, and this is here us in Barcelona, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the first event in in Barcelona. We were very, very Look happy. The air. What's going on there? What? No, nothing went there. What? What happened now? <laughs> that, that's that's a problem. It was me with ten less seasons, probably ten less kilos over. <laughs> also, <laughs> I'll join so, that club. <laughs> but 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 I have I have the same enthusiasm. And I have the absolutely. And, and who who was on the boat then? Because you had. Um, Vasco was obviously tactician. Didn't you have, um, we have Bruni as well? Bruni also, who was the starting helmsman. That, that's in Valencia, celebrating when yeah, we yeah. won the season. So that's the. You remember that party? Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, well, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. So that that's the end of season party in Valencia when we when we won the season. As I said, it took us six years to do it on, again on four, bo on four boats to to win our first yeah. season. So we celebrated properly. Long and hard, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. It was a long time coming victory and long time <laughs> celebration. Exactly. Still celebrating. <laughs> Let's look back, uh, Gigi, at that uh, first race, our only race of the day. Quantum Racing winning, as we said, uh, coming off the start line on the pin end. Yeah, I think that, that was perfect execution from... Terry, Doug DeVos, the trimmers and the whole crew on Quantum, they, they nailed the start and they, the, the key there was not only they, they took advantage of the start, that, but they were also able to, to tack and cross very early, so they took the best of both worlds, they, they took the, 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 the bias on the line and they took the, they, they were the first ones going to the right also, so they they took the shift, the breeze, and the start. So that, that translated into a massive lead of, of more than 200 meters on the, on the first weather mark that with the guide like Terry and Lucas and Michele, who are all obviously a very tight group. You know, Lucas <laughs> they, well. they are very, very, very good at administrating that advantage. Yeah. So, so once they are 200 meters in front, it's very hard that they will lose a race. So you know Lucas well, do you? I I didn't I didn't race a lot against him at, in Argentina because he was basically sailing 470s and then he mm -hmm. he left when I already left the 470s by by a long time. I yeah, yeah. I, I quitted the 470s in in Seoul '88 and he was sailing in London 2012 12. and Rio 2016 yeah. and then and then he left. Uh, to live in the US, so I didn't. You raced him in J seventies, did you? I, I raced against him in J seventies, uh, in both in Argentina and and in Europe, and obviously 
he's a, he's also a very talented guy. He he won an, an Olympic medal for a reason, and he he won a JCT Worlds, and he he's been elected to sail on American Magic and Quantum Racing for a reason. So so I think that he's he's a very good young talent from our country mm -hmm. that hopefully we get to enjoy again. What are you hoping for then? Are you still hoping to get a team back together again at some stage? Myself, you mean? Yes. Uh, well, uh, I'm enjoying with what I'm doing now with because I'm sailing many different boats, but I'm definitely looking forward to come back to the Super Series. I'm not sure if about putting a new team again, but at least joining a, a team and trying to, to bring my experience into into the into the team trying to help them raise the game and hopefully try to hope for a for a season season win. Indeed, uh, we understand that they are keeping the boats out on the water just now. We had uh, uh, information saying there will be no further racing, but they're keeping the boats out, waiting to see what the breeze is going to do. But uh, that is uh, as good news. In the meantime, we're going to stay on air in the uh, in the meantime, but. Uh, breeze was, had got quite light, hadn't it? We just saw the breeze diminishing on that first upwind. Gijou. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was expecting Thor to, 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 help us, yeah. to help us there from the water, but yes, uh, compared to the first race that every, everybody was hiking, we, we saw the second race that we, they had half of the crew laying inside the boat and that's normally when you barely have six knots and that's normally also the the bottom limit of the of the, of the breeze in order to have a decent race you you, you the, the the boat sails in less than that but but any any little path any little shift can make a big difference and normally it doesn't make the the race to be very fair so if Maria decided to abandon the race was because she was judging that the conditions were not given for a for a fair race and, and good good for her because she still has four days to go and I'm I prefer to have less races but decent ones and having I mean poor races just just to complete the program. So completely. I mean we're we, we're day one and we might as well wait we, and try and get decent we know, conditions. We know we know this is a special season because yeah, the Mediterranean. No, normally, the 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 sea, the, the sea temperature in the Mediterranean is about 25, 26 degrees, and this year it was 28, 29. So the the water is a lot hotter than average, a lot. And at this stage of the year, then the temperatures are around 26, 27. There's no difference in temperature in between the land and the and the water, so that's, that's not the good combination to bring the proper sea breeze. Normally, the sea breeze, just to explain to the people, is the the sea temperature stays stable, or at maximum changes one degree in between day and night in the summer. Let's say so. Let's assume that the the, the water temperature is 25 degrees, but the but the land, if you go to the concrete, if you go to the to an avenue, it it goes from 50 degrees at 2, 3 p.m. in the afternoon uh, in the sun to 30 degrees at night. So that's a 20 degrees uh, amplitude. So during the day that the, the, the land gets too hot, that hot mass of, uh, of, of air goes up by, by, by temperature, and that creates a hole, and by pressure, the wind gets, gets into, the, into that hole, creating the sea breeze. If, if you don't have the, that difference of temperature, the sea breeze that does not occur. And that's exactly what is happening in most of the venues in Europe at this stage of the year. And not, not because Barcelona is worse than Palma or is worse than any other venue at this stage of the year. It's because the, 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 the water in the Mediterranean is a lot hotter and that's creating difficulties for the sea breeze to develop if we don't have proper sun or if the temperature doesn't reach the 20 degrees, or perfect scenario, we have a real gradient, so real real breeze that it's blowing, or a storm, or whatever it is, so we have strong breeze the whole day. But if we are waiting for the sea breeze, we need that combination of difference of temperature in between land and sea. So that, that, that far, 
is not happening that much. So that's why the series we are having are very And at the moment gentle. now the temperatures have evened out such, yeah. such as that temperature difference has been. And that's how we quite often see in the, even in these uh, venues where we have good solid sea breezes like St Palma, late afternoon, early evening, the, the temperatures even out. And uh, it all gets a little bit, a uh, little bit difficult. We uh, we have this little fun thing operating through the, the course of this season, doing ten quick fire questions uh, and answers in ten seconds. Just a little chance to get uh, to know some of our sailors better. We spoke with Miles Seddon, the navigator on board the Value, and ten and ten. This Miles Seddon. So, what's your favourite film? Top Gun. What's your favourite sailing venue? Uh, Porto Chavo. Favourite food? Uh, curry. If you had one superpower, what would it be? Time travel. What age did you start sailing? Uh, Eleven. What's your favourite bar or coffee shop? Oh, uh, Hurst on the Hill. Apart from sailing, what's your favourite sport? Skiing. Uh, who's the best sailor in the world? Uh, Nick Rogers. <laughs> Next question. Uh, apart from Celia, what's the best and worst thing about being a pro, pro sailor? Uh, time at home, time away. And if you won twenty million dollars, what would you do with it? Go skiing. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Good, well done, thank you. No. So that's uh, Miles Seddon. So Gigi, ten and ten. Are you ready? No. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Go in. What's your favourite film? Braveheart. What Braveheart? Now there's a man. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Good. You've just got up in my estimation. What's your favourite sailing venue? Uh, Cascais. What's your favourite food? Uh, asado. What, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, one super? One superpower, what would it be? Being fit and thin. <laughs> but you are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and what age did you start sailing? Four. Uh, what's your favourite bar or coffee shop? Uh, Pepino, Buenos Aires. Good. Apart from sailing, what's your favourite sport? Uh, motocross. Who's the best sailor in the world? Paul mm. Elstrom. Mm. <sighs> All right, good. And what's the best and the worst thing about being a pro sailor? Uh, the, the only worst, the bad part is being away from the family. Other than that, is the best profession in the world. Indeed. And if you won $20 million, what would you do with it? Buy more motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> so, no TP52 then? And, and what DP52? <laughs> exactly. Anyway, we, uh, we have a little bit of time. We're going to go back to Lars. We're talking about the uh, genesis of the 52 Super Series. Lars, just tell us about the process then. You, you obviously had to make some key calls during that winter of 2011 into 2012. We got three stakeholders on board. On board. What was that process like for you? No, when we figured out and that was the end of the season 2011 of the Audi Met Cup that Audi would love to leave the circuit, I had the first uh, discussions with, with Rob and we were talking a little bit about uh, to change the concept. And I think the, the most important thing was, as we knew, you know, without a big main partner, it's difficult to finance a circuit like that. We said, okay, we have to try to find a solution to, to cut the costs a little bit. And then it was very much about changing the concept and saying, let's go back to Yacht Club. Let's try to get integrated in prestigious events. And that's where we started. And then we had the first discussions with uh, Niklas Sandström. Um, so there was a very, very interesting time, but at the end it was very much about the development of a new concept, to have a vision, to create something and have this, that they kind of an attitude saying, okay, let's move forward, because when we talked to the different owners and the sailors, everybody was saying, you know, the TP52 as a boat, the base race boat, uh, monohull in the whole world, and I think that was really, really motivating. But at the end, Gizhe was there as well, and maybe he shares my point of view when it comes to the TP52 as one of the best monohull, or the best monohull on earth. Well, he just said he was going to buy another one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I thought he wants to buy the whole circuit now, <laughs> with the 20 million. I don't think it... I, I can do it with 20 million. Oh. Would, you, would you sell it for that much? <laughs> okay, there. that's what we have to discuss later on. Now, w one thing I can, I can uh, honestly add is I, I, I've been lucky enough to sail from J70s to 40 footers, 50 footers, 70 footers, 100 footers, and 120 footers. And I can, I can only say that 
I, I still didn't find any, any other boat better than the 52. For me, it's a perfect size because it's still human size. I mean, still a big boat. I mean, if you disrespect it, you you get you get stay with Steve Hills. You get <laughs> you get punished, but still sails, weights, loads are within the human control, and the speeds are are good. I mean, the maneuvers are are are, are really are really fast. In some kind of way, you you sail it as a dinghy. You disrespect it a little bit, which is the nice thing. I mean, you you make crosses by inches. I mean, you. You, you take a lot of risk in this boat because you have a lot of control and at, at the same time they are very quick and very funny to sell so so far i i, I want to keep coming back to this to this series because i, I still didn't find any, any other boat which is more fun to sell than the 52s that that's a pure truth but Lars, I mean, we, we've worked long and hard on the, the media side of it. We've, look how we've developed the uh, live TV. We're here doing five days of live over the course of this regatta. But it's an essential part of the message, isn't it, and the desirability of the circuit. I think, you know, when we came up with the concept, it was very much about underlining, you know, this pure performance aspect, and that's exactly what, uh, what Gigi is saying, because when it comes to the competition, the competition is so close, and... I think that was one of the initial ideas, and I remember the last year, the season of the Audi Met Cup, I think on average we had something like uh, six or seven boats, and then we were coming up with the idea that, okay, we have to keep a of the... So we just seem to have lost your, your mic for one second, Lars. We'll come back to you in a second. But uh, I say we're just saying how important the, the media aspect of it, making it desirable, making it uh, aspirational, Gigi. People want to come and do it, and it's, it's had a big, big following around the world. And, uh, I mean, it's interesting to see the, the Thai team in coming in. They're guys who are uh, top sailors at home in Thailand, and they've watched all the videos, and they've, they've, they're here doing it this year. You were right. Uh, let's look at the amount of hair I had. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. But but yes, I I think that the media is it's only reflecting what it's really happening on the water. I yeah. mean, the the racing is fabulous and and it's so intense and it's so demanding and so consuming that by the end of the five days of racing you end up really empty. But by the time you get home, you you are already wishing <laughs> wishing the next one to 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 come so so it's it's i, I think it's aspirational because it, it delivers what every everybody thinks it is indeed there you go big smiles on gigi's face yeah but, but, but any you know what uh, and sorry to interrupt you but even vasco when had we, here eh? <laughs> when we went there was valencia in 2012 the first uh, big party but i think you know when we're coming up with the, the concept the most important thing was you know to try to, uh, to uh, make the circuit attractive to as many boats, as many teams as possible. You know, the media impact at that time in 2012 for us was not like the, the main obje objective. The main thing was, you know, to keep it, you know, to maintain that, to keep the boats together and to listen to the owners because that was one of the biggest problems what we had with Santa Monica or with the Met Cup in general because at the end that was driven by a sponsor and there was very much about key markets key markets and then the media impact. So when we did the, when we pressed the restart button in 2012, thanks to the support of Dr. Voth, the Ramos family and Niklas Sandstrom, you know, the approach was different. And there was very much to create something sustainable, I'm not talking about sustainability in that way, I keep something to create something sustainable on the long run. But when we did that in 2012, I remember the first meeting what we had in Key West, uh, uh, yeah. Gisha was not there, it was Vasco representing the Ramos family. You know, we never thought that we would make it 10 years. You know, if I had a look, you know, this morning, you know, the Audi Met Cup, there we were only talking about four years. And when we put the, the whole Breitling stuff together, then this whole circuit made it eight years. And we are celebrating now 10 years, and we're already talking about the next three years. And then also keep in mind that we had Corona two years that now we have the, the big problem going on there, there in Russia and Ukraine. So, but that underlines, you know, the concept is good, the boats are great, and the thing is, you know, very much the human touch, you know, keep the people together, have a little bit the family approach, you know, also doing the owner's dinner, and I think that makes it very much like a 360 degrees concept. 
Indeed, and as you say, it's accessible. I mean, it's great to have seen the uh, Thai team coming in this year and integrating into the whole circuit. They've made friends and they're, uh, they're really enjoying the camaraderie, the same as all the other, the other owners. Anyway, that's what we have uh, for today. Unfortunately, we've only had the one race. Uh, join us again tomorrow. We... Still expecting light breezes, but we'll be live uh, every day here from uh, Barcelona. Join us tomorrow.